मधीय हृदयाकाशे सदानंदमयो गुरु उदेदु सदम सम्यक अज्ञान तिमिरारुण हरि हरि ओम तत्स ओ I don't know whether you thought about what exactly is meant by the sankhya yoga Sankhya is actually a very deep and wholesome study 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 itself is a process and a course through knowledge knowledge To gain any knowledge whatsoever the effort is the knowing process See, you have to reach a destination on the ground. What do you do? You only have to operate your legs and start walking. That is the only way. In the matter of knowing anything whatsoever, the process itself is knowing. It is not that you do some other process and then reach. Like, for example, get into a vehicle. and you see simply keep quiet drive the vehicle and the vehicle reaches you it is not like that you have to exercise employ your own knowledge mechanism knowledge instruments and by employing them you have to gain the knowledge so it is called jnanam jnayam jnana gamyam what does it mean jnanam jnayam jnana gamyam what does it mean it is knowledge it is the knowable you interact with the knowable what is to be known you interact with them with what will you interact with your intelligence with your mind so it's a mental intellectual exertion aimed at getting knowledge and the very process also is knowing jnana <coughs> gamyam to be reached at by the process of knowing so there is nothing non knowing in it there is no mechanical there is no mechanical process there there is no physical process the very course and the pursuit itself is knowing sankhya is something like that krishna is setting up propositions arjuna is hearing them after hearing after hearing the proposition Arjuna starts deliberating upon them if at all as a result of which he gains the knowledge it is knowledge itself which is coursed through coursed through that is why it is called sankhya yoga i have a coinage for me that is it is infusional introspection what introspection all people will do depending upon the object to be known now here the introspection is aimed at infusing it into the very mind and intelligence the purpose of introspection is to infuse its effects 
into the mind and the intelligence infusional introspection now every proposition he has set is for reflection rumination introspection evaluation ashochyan anvashojastvam you are grieving over those people who should not be grieved at so arjuna's grief itself is unfounded then how can he grieve i don't understand do you really get get the point see he was grieving now krishna is saying you are very grieving is uncalled for so arjuna is obliged to delve into his grieving process and understand that it was unnecessary a person has died you start grieving a person has died and why are you grieving and what will you do with the grief you tell me will you be benefited will the dead man come back to life will the cremation be helped will his absence be substituted tell me is there any earthly benefit by your grieving then why are you grieving he is grieving to be done or the person has gone there is an absence i may have some emotional turbulence that i will manage now what is to be done after the death of the person which are the gaps to be filled which are the responsibilities to be taken up nothing should stop see there are people whose dear one dies you know when the man has died these people are unable to do anything and neighbors and the others come and handle the dead body make everything then also these people go on crying i cannot understand the dead body doesn't require a loving treatment huh what no answer it is better to talk to dead bodies <laughs> see the dead body doesn't require a treatment who will do it the dearest person should do it not that you leave it to the others but are they doing it then what cause why are they suffering then oh you are dear to me therefore you leave me neglected that is what the dearness tells you to do see when questions like this are presented the man is overtaken by it he cannot grieve at all this is the effect of introspection sankhya is noted for that every proposition then he says you speak about death there will be nobody who will die in this world everybody exists 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 existence cannot be non existence existence means to exist to exist to exist and without change without change without change that what are you trying to speak about by this war that people will fall dead why have they come here why have people come to the war field you tell me so they are actually meeting the outcome for which they have come suppose they don't die and they don't conquer the enemy will they be happy so what is the wrong in it it is just like two cricket teams going to the cricket ground and one of them saying i will not play because i am afraid i am afraid i will lose i am afraid he will lose therefore i will not play see it's something very interesting you don't understand and this is an area which we have taken up there there is no objective scientific experimentation or research process will work this is an area reserved only for spiritual introspection by no other means you can access it so this is triumphant 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 right from the beginning then he says birth itself is a transformation death is another transformation if all the other trans all the other transitions are acceptable why not death also and without death can we afford to live so what is the wrong so far as life is concerned he has said life is an interaction between the senses and the sense objects and this interaction is bound to produce sukha or dukha sukha or dukha and one is complement to the other they are mutual either both are there or neither is there 
Now what is the problem in it? If you want to have Sukha, you must have preceding Dukha and you must have succeeding Dukha. You cannot have Sukha as a uniform experience. Nor can you have Dukha as a uniform experience. Can you have a reflection without an object? If the mirror reflects, then why are you saying you have made me too? I am alone one. My dear mirror, you have made me too. Will you ever say that? So this is the point. Naturally this Arjuna is baffled. He is presented such a vehement reasoning that he cannot but flow with the tide. Now he has come to a position where whoever is not able, whoever is able to remain unassailed, unshaken, unshaken, unafflicted by the Sukadukas, by adopting an attitude of samatva towards both. I don't want you to do anything with the changeful Sukadukas, but I want you to do something. What is that? Have a uniform attitude towards both. This is the third factor that you must have. It is something like learning to swim in drowning waters. Waters are there, they will drown you also. Can you learn swimming in knee deep water? Huh? Can you learn swimming even in hip deep water? If you have to learn swimming, you have to learn swimming in drowning waters. And when you learn swimming, you can float in the water. The drowning power is not removed or destroyed, but you are able to harmonize with it. You will not be hurt. You will have the joy of swimming. Similarly, Sugadukas are the turbulent water in the course of our life. Learn swimming. And what is that learning? What is the methodology? Samadukha Sugam Dhiram you have to do nothing about Sukha or Dukha. Let them come or go. But you become equal. So that evenness or equalness towards the changeful Sukha Dukhas is an attitude that you have to plant in your mind, preserve, protect, nourish and cherish. It is just like an ornament you buy very costly and you put it on your neck. This Samadukha Sukham Dhiram. This quality is generated by the intelligence, preserved perhaps by the mind. So in the intelligence you say, these are transitory, they will come and go, they are impermanent and we have to be at home with them. Therefore from now on, I will no more have, no more have a wish or a preference towards Sukha and a resentment or dislike towards Dukkha. Because both are equally necessary. Either both will be there or neither will be there. It is a knowledge that takes place in your intelligence. As a result of the knowledge, the mind starts imbibing the attitude of uniformity, equalness towards both. Now such a man is fit for liberation. What is that liberation? My dear Arjuna, you asked me, I remember it. Yet Shreyasya Nishchitam Bruhitan me. Say that. Tell me very precisely, decisively, what constitutes Shreyas for me. This constitutes Shreyas for you. Samadukha Sukham Dhiram. Bas, Ogya. I think I can close up Gita and go away from here. The Shreyas is attained by Samadukha Sukhatva. Say that. No. Samadukha Sukhatva. No. Samadukha Sukhatva. I am very ashamed. Shreyas is attained by Shreyas is attained by My students are wonderful. Shreyas is attained by Samadukha Sukhatva. Shreyas is attained by Samadukha Sukhatva. He who is wise. He who is wise. To adopt and pursue. To adopt and pursue. 
समदुख सुखा एटीट्यूड दिस इज द पॉइंट हियर यू डोंट क्रिएट एनरी यू डोंट डिसलॉर्ज एनरी यू डोंट कंप्लेन अबाउट एनरी यू वेलकम यूर माइंड यू वेलकम द सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट इंटरक्शन यू इक्वली ओपन यूर माइंड टू हैव कॉन्स्टेंट सुख दू खास बट यू इम्प्लांट इन यूर माइंड ए कंकरंट एटीट्यूड नेमली sama dukha sukhatva see we have not disturbed anything and sukha dukhas will be repeatedly occurring in fact there is no time in your wakeful state when you don't have either sukha or dukha so this sama dukha sukhatva remains uniformly as an ornament as a reinforcement as a decoration to your inner personality throughout the 17 hours of your wakefulness have you understood ha huh? i don't think you should jump with the joy of knowing it see what have i said you don't have to do anything understand life understand its impact and allow everything to go on and to help you to remain happy with all of them simply adopt to pursue and strengthen one attitude of yours as a human being are we not are we not expected to have better and better attitudes better and better perceptions better and better responses insights etc so this comes to you in the form of an insight this is what sankhya does sankhya does not do anything but it makes you think in transpect we have only adorned ourselves with an attitude called samadukha sukhatva and by doing so you have become wiser what this is meant only for the wise if you are not able to do it please declare that i am not wise sign the paper and give it to me if you are wise you have no alternative before you you have to imbibe this attitude now he presents a proposition in a very beautiful manner there is a lot to think about it nasato vidyade bhavo na bhavo vidyade sadah उभयोरभिदृष्टोंदनयोस्तत्वर्शि ईवन द सुख दुखा ई विल प्रूव टू यू आर् नाट दे सो ही सैट्स ए प्रापोजिशन तत्वर्शी दोज पीपल हू आर् गिवन टू वेरी डीप एंड क्लोज एंड कंसिस्टेंट इंट्रॉस्पेक्शन ओवर द सटल ट्रूथ ऑफ लाइफ which cannot submit themselves to any kind of an objective scientific analysis we can penetrate there only with our intelligence say you have a thought in your mind can you ever see it can you measure the sukha experience or dukha experience inside our body whatever is transpiring no access can be made to them by virtue of any kind of an objective scientific process let us be very clear so the only way you can access it buddhi grahyam adindriyam as krishna says later though it is beyond the senses it is accessible to the intelligence krishna is activating the intelligence of arjuna and making it reflect upon reflect upon reflect upon and through that process arjuna is made to imbibe 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 all the qualities that are required so bhagavad gita is a discussion of the qualities and excellences of human life the qualities and excellences qualities and excellences which are relevant to relevant to the emotional mind and the rational intelligence in addition bhagavad gita also speaks about developing your will and wish we have got something in the way of will will power as people call 
that will can be extended and developed to any extent any extent any extent nasato vidyade bhavo na bhavo vidyade satah ubhayor abhi drushto ondah tu anayo tattvadarshi bihi tattvadarshis are those people maharshis and ascetics particularly who constantly take up this kind of an introspection they only read they only think they only understand yoga vasishta ramayana consists of 32000 sanskrit verses all of them are a record of the dialogue 18 day dialogue from morning to evening that transpired in the palace of ayodhya between the 16 year old rama and the family preceptor vasishta dev all of them are an interaction between the emotional mind and the rational intelligence in yoga vasishta it is between the enlightened intelligence and the confused mind the whole discussion is that so he says tattvadarshis have found out so krishna recognizes that in our country there were people earlier right from the ancient times people had been given to this introspection it is as a result of that our people evolved the upanishadic thought revolving around the imperishable impersonal inmost self self is the only subject revealed in the upanishads self self and what is the self everyone's identity unchanging identity denoted by the term i i i so i is the subject of discussion and revelation in the upanishads so people were able to evolve to that level only because they were given to tattva darshana tattva darshana tattva means what in english we call it principle but it's not right tattva is actually neither a substance nor matter nor energy it can only be deciphered by your intelligence for example we say zero what is the zero can you demonstrate it we have numbers like 1 2 3 4 etc etc but when we say zero what is that can anybody demonstrate it show it to you this is zero similarly we use a concept called infinity what infinity. is infinity definable it is only a concept in sanskrit we call it pratyaya it is something that occurs to your mind or intelligence so we present the proposition and start explaining it explaining it explaining it to demonstrate zero the methodology that our people adopted was i don't i cannot repeat to you fully but i can give you an idea of it i hope i will be able to do it well Sixteen, I tell you. Imagine sixteen, one six. Are you imagining? Divided by two, you get eight. Divided further by two, half it, half it. Then it becomes four. Take two away from it. Again, take one. Remove that also. what is left is zero this is called zero now is there anything called zero there but 16 18 10 everything we know but zero we cannot show but it is a concept all the others are visible but this is invisible but nevertheless meaningful and relevant 
Similarly, we say infinity. What is this infinity? There can be smaller infinities and bigger infinities. <laughs> Both, all of them are infinity. But what is infinity then? We cannot say. Infinity is a measure about which you can say nothing. That's all. Similarly, these are all concepts. They are postulates. Mental intellectual postulates presented before the people for them to think and deliberate upon. So he says, two propositions are there. Asat and Sat. What? In Kerala, in our common parlance, sometimes we scold people, he is an Asat. <laughs> they are saying he is a useless man, troublesome man, wicked, etc. It is a blameful word. Asat. Asat. <laughs> and the opposite of it is Sat. So Sat and Asat are two propositions. Now we will define the proposition. Nasato Vidyate Bhavo. Say that. Nasato Vidyate Bhavo. Asat is that. Asat is that which never comes into expression, existence, prevalence or presence. Asat. Asat means something that never comes into expression or revelation. And what is Sat? Sat is something which never goes out of expression. So Sat can never cease to be and Asat can never come to be. Say. These are two. They are only in your mind and intelligence. Asat will never be present and Sat will never be absent. Now these are two propositions and definitions. Now you tell me, when you compare terms, then what is the conclusion? The conclusion is, if there is anything existing, it has to be Sat. Otherwise it cannot exist. If we accept it as Sat, then it can never change or transform. What is change? Change is disappearance of the present form and appearance of something new. So if the Sat changes, that means it is absent. One form goes away, goes away and another form comes. So the two are not the same. So though propositions are two, the conclusion is only one. Sat alone can be and whatever is, it has to be Sat. Whatever is, it has to be Sat. If it is Sat, it cannot change. Now you apply it to yourself and the world and let me know whether you are Sat or Asat. Huh? If you are Asat, then why say I am? If you are Asat, then how do you say I am? I was. Was there any time when you were absent? The I in you was absent. When you become unconscious, then after waking up you say, I was unconscious. After sleeping you say, I slept. So is there any time when the I has disappeared? So is it not Sat? Anything other than the I can be a Sat, but I can never be a Sat. It is the Sat. Apply it to Sukadukhas. Apply it to? Are Sukadukhas Sat? If they are Asat, then why are they there? So Sukadukhas cannot be called Sat. At the same time, we cannot dismiss them as Asat because we are feeling. So what is the truth? The truth is that neither Sukha nor Dukha has got a prevalence. It is something else that makes us feel sat, sukha and dukha. One example I can tell you is, look at my finger. This is only a pen. It has got a very linear dimension, very limited. Now look. Are you not seeing a circle? Ah. 
सर्कल मीन्स वॉट इट इज अ पेंसिल सर्कुलर पेंसिल हाउ कैन इट बी इज इट देर बट आर यू नॉट सीइंग इट सो विश्वली यू मे सी समथिंग वेन यू एक्सैमिन इट यू फाइन इट इज नॉट द रियल एक्सप्रेशन देर इज ओनली वन पेंसिल वन पेन विच आई हैव हेल्प माई फिंगर्स and i rotate my finger very fast so much so that you are seeing a circle so the circle is an illusory presence the pen is the real fact similar similarly in your sukhadukhas are the sukhadukhas themselves anything or it is only a display that you are seeing if it is a display whose display so the i is the fact and whatever is displays manifest or presence is the illusion that is why you say i am happy the same way you say i am unhappy so in happiness i am in unhappiness also i am happiness never devoured me that is why i became unhappy unhappiness never swallows me that is why i become happy so in happiness and unhappiness i am equally present so what is this happiness and unhappiness my own transitory display or expressions is it clear huh no that is why the sukhadukhas become thinner and thinner later and later your tears will become less and less less and less smiles also will become less and less the entire mind will become lighter the intelligence will become clearer actually you are seeing brilliance light with the eyes this is an external visual light the real vibrance which you are feeling it is internal people say that i only feel the presence of the body my dear souls you never feel the presence of the body what you are feeling is that something makes you feel i have a body the body is not actually there but you have a feeling i have a body so it is that i have a body feeling that feeling belongs to the body or to the mind ha huh? any doubt can body feel that is why 17 hours you feel you are conscious of the body on the other hand 7 hours you are unconscious of the body now who is the real judgment maker i not the body and that i is conscious of the body for 17 hours and it is equally unconscious of the body for 7 hours about the same product the i gives you two different notions so in the whole process you tell me what is the sat and what is the asat is there any change for it so the i is putting up putting up the display of sukha and dukha so sukha dukhas are 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 simply notional sukha dukhas are and who is the notion maker so the i is the sat the rest is all asat that is why in all the asat manifestations they are not disconnected from the sat only when i am there i can be sukhi only when i am there i can be dukhi so sukhi and dukhi are what the i displays manifests so in the sukha dukhas what is the sat and what is the asat the sat is the 
experiencing I. And the Asat is the experienced Sukhadukas. When you probe into the Sukha, what do you find? You find the resplendent I. If you probe into the Dukha, what is there? Resplendent I. That remains uniformly. It is neither white nor black. It is neither thick nor thin. It is neither existence nor non-existence. It is neither internal nor external. All these words which I have used are ideas formed by the I. Is it clear to you? Huh? No. If it is clear, then what is your problem? Problem it is difficult. Huh? I don't know why it should be difficult. Vinod, what do you say? Is it difficult? Huh? Why don't you spend enough time on this process of thinking? If you spend about 24 hour, 25 hours on this thinking, you will start feeling Sukadukhas are lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. You will yourself start saying, no Sukha and no Dukha. You tell me in Sukha, what manifests? What is it that really produces Sukha? And what produces Dukha? So is it not yourself putting a white dress and a yellow dress? There there are at least two, body and dress. But here there is only one, the internal consciousness. That consciousness, that consciousness makes you feel Sukha. The same consciousness makes you feel Dukha. Why this difference at all? In the absence of this difference, you will not be able to distinguish the I. I don't know whether you have understood my point. In the absence of? Our astronauts, when they were going to moon, they went away from the orbit of the earth, far into when they looked all around, there is no distance, there is no color, no brightness, no darkness, nothing they could understand. And they have to be told from below, it is about 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, get up, go to the toilet, wash your teeth, have your breakfast, have your bath, etc., etc. They did not know whether I eyes are there and the eyes can see a number of colors suppose no color is there before the eye will you ever know that you have the eye huh? when no sound is heard i don't think we will be missing our ear so all our experiences are interactional if for the interaction the other factor is not there our interactions will totally disappear. So if Sukha and Dukha are differently not there, you will not be able to know that there is someone or some presence which, which is feeling the Sukha and feeling the Dukha. So the Sukha Dukha display becomes necessary to reveal the third factor called the I. Sugadukas, as distinct from one another, or should you have the Viveka by having Sugadukas? These Sugadukas are there only to reveal, only to reveal the I behind them. See, my question is, by looking at Sugadukas or experiencing Sugadukas, 
should you run after one of them and hate another or should you apply your viveka discrimination to know that see there is a presence which manifests sukha and after some time manifests dukha it is to go to that presence that these alternates are there not clear ha huh? so whenever sukha dukha has come don't get lost in them try to unearth try to unearth the i which brings them and takes them every experience is a pointer to the experiencer when you start looking in this manner and evaluate all your experiences what do you get you get only one experiencer so can you look at the object and be infused by the subjects my dear souls this is a very great explanation you are looking at the object and get lost in the object i want you to look at the object and understand what is looking at the object and what is the impression you get you get the impression of the subject so all objects equally point to and confirm the presence of the singular subject the entire world is an anatha chakra it is the consciousness spinning and weaving the world this consciousness is rooted within your body within your body ishvara sarvabhutanam hrudeshe arjuna trishtadi brahmayan sarvabhutani yantrarudhani mayaya the great lord ishvara is seated in the heart of everyone and he is revolving and rotating everybody as if mounted on a wheel tame vasharanam gacha what seek refuge under him under him everything is a display of the eye if everything equally the sukha reveals the eye the dukha also reveals the eye as revealers of the eye what difference is there between the two ha huh? so the differences vanish differences once you take them to be pointers of the eye the differences vanish that is why we are not able to see anything in this world other than god other than the self it is not a pseudo statement it is not an induced perception it is a fact it is a truth nasato vidyate bhavo na bhavo vidyate sadaha ubhayor api drushto andaha tu anayo tattva darshayi the difference between the two has been clearly ascertained by the seers of truth it is this krishna who said ब्रह्मसूत्रपदैश्चैवाहेतुमद्भिर्विनिश्चितैः ऋषिर्बहुधा गीत छंदोभिर्विधक ब्रह्मसूत्रपदेशेतुमद्भिर्विनिश्चित एस ए प्रापोजिशन बिगिनिंग प्रापोजिशन की सैज ऋषीज हैव स्पोकन संग डिफरेंटली अबाउट इट ब्रह्मसूत्र ऑल्सो हैज डिस्कस्ड इट एंड टेकिंग रीकोर्स टू हार्ट कोर रीजन हेतुमद्भि इट हैज बीन असटेन नौ ई विल एक्सप्लेन टू यू वाट इट ईज इन मई लैंग्वेज महाभूतान्यहंकारो बुद्धिरव्यक्तमे इंद्रिया दशैक पंचचेन्द्रिय गोचरा इच्छा द्वेश सुखम दुखम संखादेतना धृति एकदेत्र सविकार मुदाहृत एव्रीथिंग इज सब्जेक्ट टू मॉडिफिकेशन 
and there is only one knower who remains unmodified kya baat hai thoda sochiye na what a wonderful presentation is this i wanted to question krishna are how dare you say brahma sutra padaishchaiva did krishna say so or veda vyasa is written because these brahma sutras were written by vyasa deva most probably after completing mahabharata and in mahabharata appears bhagavad gita so how could krishna read brahma sutras i was questioning veda vyasa and krishna then i said i should not end up such a nod so i said like veda vyasa edited vedas he must also have edited brahma sutras and like vedas the brahma sutras also were there and krishna had so much of erudition that he had read it aisa likha hai see there is no moment when your experiences do not imply indicate and point to the self cry weep smile laugh do anything in everything this in line truth is there you don't have to chant to be connected to god the i is there firmly rooted i is not our creation it is a swayambhu automatically present as long as the i is there which god are you referring to whom are you seeking whom do you want to be connected i want to be connected to whom ha huh? i want to be connected push you want to connect your mind to intelligence to you don't want you to be connected to everything is connected to the i it cannot get disconnected from the i this is why i say brahma vid brahmaiva bhavat what a man who knows brahman becomes brahman knowing is becoming you are already brahman but you don't know when you know it ah this i is the i is the truth so do i have to get it ha huh? do i have to know it do i have to grasp it do i have to possess it see what is the verb that you will use with reference to i because all verbs are in connection to that subject i know i know i see i get i have not got i am the subject i am the subject everything is descriptions you know predications about the i for the i you need no predication at all it is present it is everywhere avinashitu tadvidhi yena sarvam idam tatam vinasham avyayasya asya na kashchit kartum arhadi avinashitu tadvidhi yena sarvam idam tatam no that to be indestructible no that to be by which all this is pervaded what is pervaded is subject to destruction you know india is one of the 10 countries of the world where we are being constantly constantly or repeatedly subjected to the vagaries of nature vagaries of nature so we will have people dying in flood dying in drought dying in cyclone dying in pilgrimage dying in cloud burst all these are vagaries of nature and we are living in such a country either you learn you learn to face them sublimate them or you leave the country and seek some other place we are not afraid we are not afraid of anything in this world when a calamity comes we welcome it we will think what best next to be done that's all our attention the people of japan are apparently better than us i think in this manner 
they are living in a land of volcano volcanic eruptions are frequent and they are adjusted nobody dies i think because of volcano is there anybody dying so let us learn to live in this world have a world point of view try to understand the measure and magnitude of the world what are you afraid of some people will die some people will live some will be poor some will be rich the world has enough of wealth to distribute to the poor the other, the other day i read 60 or 16 60 crores of people are under poverty in the world 60 crores what is the world population 700 crores do we not have money to alleviate their poverty we have but we will not we will not use it then you will say there is no missionary there is no government if you and i think we cannot alleviate we must have the power we must have the potential so the government should take up the matter there is poverty it has to be eliminated we want you to do that and the government should become trustworthy very often people are ask people are asking how can we give to the government it will not be well spent we are not sure this reply should not come in sweden and other places they say the tax is something like is there anybody who knows it more than 50% and they say the people are happy to give it because the government looks after everything when i went to america i was we were living with pangaj there was some kind of a blockade in one of the drains they will not allow the resident to do it they say inform us we will come and do it don't do it yourself here there is no such government which will come and do so we are bound to do. this is the difference nobody is unhappy that they are paying 50% tax because government services education is free hospitalization is free for everybody everyone so this suffering poverty it cannot be removed because it is not god made it is man made man made so i wanted to say this point this knowledge is so beautiful so great so wonderful that in front of it no problem remains at all if we cannot resolve a problem we will dissolve it samvedya varjitam anuttamam egamadyam samvitpadam vigalanam kalayan mahatman hrudyevatishta kalanarihita kriyam tu kurvan agartrupadame etya samodida shri kurvan agartrupadame etya samodida shri